coming right up, we have a presentation on the topic of the role of the public sector in green finance. For this, we're pleased to have the Minister of Finance of Luxembourg, Mr. Pierre Gromania. Dear organizers of the Singapore FinTech Festival, ladies and gentlemen, as the Minister of Finance of Luxembourg, it is my pleasure to participate to the festival for the first time. I would have preferred to be live with you, but because of the pandemic, I have to do it through a digital camera and, and digital transmission. I am very pleased to be with you and I can tell you that in Luxembourg your fintech festival is already well known as uh, uh, the institution Luxembourg for Finance which promotes and develops the financial center of Luxembourg has participated in the past two years as has also the Luxembourg House of Financial Technology who will be also present in this edition uh, through digital means. Now, uh, I've been a finance minister for seven years and I must say that the uh, topic that you have chosen to highlight this year is very close to my heart because you connect fintech with green finance. You can see that I wear the pins of the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. I'm not doing this on purpose for this uh, recording. I do this on an everyday basis because I really think that green finance, sustainable finance, is the future. No, it's wrong, it's the present. Uh, maybe this is due to the fact that back in 1997 I attended COP3, the uh, famous Kyoto conference where the first international agreement on climate change was negotiated. At that time Luxembourg had the presidency of the European Union and I was the spokesperson for the European Union at that conference. Since I have attended a few others, Convention of Parties for Climate Change, the last one that took place live was in Madrid in 2019, and I was there with the Minister of Finance, uh, as Minister of Finance together with the Minister of the Environment of Luxembourg. So uh, I do not need to be convinced that we have to connect finance with sustainability and uh, it is also true for fintech companies. Now we live uh, in a time where we are overwhelmed by the consequences of the Covid pandemic and uh, uh, what it has triggered in terms of economics uh, uh, all over the world. Now let's face it, it has been quite a challenge for all countries and uh, Europe has lived up to the challenge. Who would have thought that Europe would uh, answer with such a move of solidarity as it has happened quite quickly since uh, April of this year? Few were the observers who thought that Europe would have a common response to this pandemic. Now, you could ask what is the link between the pandemic and fintech and green? It's very obvious. I'm going to say a few words on the European package that has been agreed on the night of April 9, 2020, very late in the night, we agreed three important measures, a three-pronged answer to the COVID crisis to take care of one very simple fact. The virus was hitting us symmetrically. We had to react together with solidarity and we managed to do it. Uh, we have organized a, a kind of safety net with three measures. One is guarantees from the European uh, Investment Bank uh, worth uh, 200 billion uh, guarantees for small and medium-sized enterprises, 100 billion for a uh, short labor scheme to be financed at European level, and last but not least the European stability mechanism based uh, in Luxembourg that has put aside 240 billion euro that can help all the countries who need it in this crisis. On top of this, in July, uh, after the recommendation of finance ministers, the prime ministers uh, of Europe agreed a 750 billion euro resilience and recovery fund, which uh, is going to be implemented uh, in the beginning of 2021. And for the first time, uh, Europe will have a lending capacity of its own, thanks 
to the decision that we took to set up this uh, Resilience and Recovery Fund. So Europe has answered in a very dynamic matter, in a solidarity manner to this crisis. And here we get to the core of it. We want to build back better and we want to do that with a priority on climate change. The European Commission and the Member States have agreed that 30% of the Resilience and Recovery Fund must be investments that are dedicated to green projects and climate change. This is a very ambitious goal. And on top of it, we have decided that 23% of the whole mass of 750 billion euro should be dedicated to the digital transition. And here you see the link between fintech and green at the European level, which is very obvious. More than half of this rebuild and the relaunch of the economy that we want to achieve at European level will be done with the twin transition, the green one dedicated to climate change and the digital one. So you see, Europe has been here at the forefront. In fact, today, more than half of uh, all green bonds are denominated in euro. Interestingly, because the part of the euro in normal bonds is far lower. So you could say that the euro has become the green currency by excellence. Now, one thing that we must not forget in this COVID crisis, which is connected to green finance and digital, is the social aspect of things. We have heard recently that the United Nations has explained that uh, the poverty gap is growing in a spectacular manner because of this uh, pandemic. $35 billion would be needed in the next days to help uh, in an urgent way uh, to um, cope with this uh, issue. But it also underlines that in our own societies we must never forget that uh, there's always a social side to every problem. And if we want to combat climate change in a way that is accepted by all, we must make sure that green and, and climate initiatives go hand in hand with social aspects and uh, how to face this double challenge. What is true for Europe in terms of priority uh, related to climate change and green uh, finance is obviously true for Luxembourg. We've taken many initiatives in the last couple of months and years and I'm going to illustrate a few of them. Let me maybe first insist again on the link between green and social aspects of finance. Uh, we have launched uh, back in September uh, an initiative to create a new framework for sustainability bonds which combine the possibility to have green and climate related aspects on one side and on the other side social aspects. So this bond will allow, subs allow subscribers to invest in projects that are both environmental and social. Uh, it's been uh, oversubscribed more than 10 times and we collected 1.5 billion euro very easily. The market uh, gave us a negative interest rate and demonstrated by being so active on this listing that there is a demand for such bonds in the market. So it's been uh, the first such sustainability bond that entails all the criteria that the European Union has uh, devised uh, uh, in the recent past. It's called the European Union Taxonomy to make sure that investments uh, are socially and uh, uh, environmentally uh, comfortable with the most stringent uh, criteria. We have also uh, included the sustainability uh, criteria of the United Nations as well as of the International Capital Markets Association. So this connection between social and uh, climate and environment, we've also applied it to our national plan for energy. Let me explain how. Next year, uh, in, in January, we will introduce a carbon tax in Luxembourg which 
obviously is very well received by the public, but increasing prices of gas, of oil is never very popular. So uh, at the same time as we announced a CO2 tax, we have also announced that for people who have lower revenues, they're going to receive a compensation through a tax reduction. I think this speaks very simply uh, the language of combining social uh, and green. Now, as a country, we've been very committed to all these issues. I have uh, participated since the beginning uh, to all uh, the meetings of the Coalition of Finance Ministers for Climate, which um, brings together 52 countries uh, of the world with finance ministers very committed to, to the topic. I have not missed any of uh, these meetings and I will continue to work into that direction. Last year, in 2019, we also welcomed the annual meeting of the Asian Investment and Infrastructure Bank in Luxembourg. It was the first time that the AIIB gathered uh, out of Asia in Europe and we were glad that Luxembourg was chosen and the priority of the discussions there were again sustainable and green finance. <clears throat> Last but not least, I think the very good news that we all hear is that the new President of the United States, Mr. Joe Biden, has announced that the United States is going to come back into the circle of the countries that subscribe to the Paris Accord for Climate Change. And this is obviously a game changer and we'll make sure that this will become a priority for all of us. And sustainable finance is the only <clears throat> smart and the only credible way to achieve the goals of the Paris Accord to reduce the increase of temperatures to two degrees. And this ambitious goal can only be achieved if we have, on the one hand, sustainable finance and fintech playing a key role to achieve these ambitious goals. And not only public finance can do the job, we must make sure that the private sector is on board. We must go from the billions to the trillions. Otherwise, we will not win this race against time. Thanks to you, I think this topic will be discussed uh, at uh, the FinTech Festival in Singapore. I hope that next year I can, can be really present without a, a digital uh, mean. All the best to the participants. It was a pleasure to be able to address you. I wish you a good festival.